Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to combine the power of stable diffusion with control nets to generate stunning and beautiful QR codes such as the ones that I'm showing you on screen right now. So very beautiful, um, really intriguing and the best part is that the way we're going to be generating them, if you scan this QR code with a mobile phone or any device that's capable of scanning them, they will actually point towards whatever the actual location is and they're not going to be corrupted. So basically in this tutorial, that's going to be our main focus to generate artistic QR codes with the power of stable diffusion and control nets in a way that still preserves the code and you can scan it. So if this sounds good to you, let's get into the video. So the starting point for this video or tutorial is going to be that I have a base installation of automatic 1111 on my system. And besides that, there's nothing else. I just have one model, which is the version 1.5 of stable diffusion, and it's the bare bones uh, system for automatic 11.11 web UI. So you have to have this set up on whatever system or device you're using. So whether that's Google Colab, Mac or Windows, just have this set up and the steps that I'm going to be showing you apply to each of them. So to get started, the first thing that we have to do is that we need to install the control net extension into automatic 11.11 so that we have the power of control net at our disposal. So to do that, we can go to the extension section. From there, we're going to click on available. And then within the search bar, I will type control net. Once this is done, we can click on load from and I'll type in control net once again. And you're basically going to come down to a point where you see sd web ui control net and you can click on installing this extension. It's going to take a little bit of time to install this, so I'll pause the video. So once the extension is installed, you're going to see that you're going to get an output saying installed into and whatever the actual path is for where you have the um, automatic 11.11 GUI code and then says extensions and SD web UI control net. So with this done, you can go to the installs tab. You can click on check for updates. And if for some reason it's not checked here, you can click on the check button here as well for SD web UI control net and you can click on apply and restart UI. This is basically going to go ahead and restart the UI. So now that we have automatic 11.11 restarted the next thing we have to do is that we need to download the models for control net that we're going to be using in order to generate these cool looking qr codes so we're going to be using two models for control net the first is going to be tile and the next one is going to be brightness the links for all of the models as well as all of the other resources that i use i will leave links to each of them in the video's description so you can take a look at them at your own convenience so let's download the control net models first so the first one you're going to be getting from hugging face um, and basically you're going to be coming to this section where it's going to show you the model card. You can click on the file section here and then you can just basically browse through all of the models available to you. And you're basically going to be installing a model called control net V11 SD15 tile. So just click on this path file and download it. And there you go. You have the actual stuff now downloaded. The next thing we're going to do is that we're going to be downloading the brightness model. That's in another repo, but same similarly on hugging face. So I'll just drag in copy the actual link for that. Again, you'll be brought over to the model card section. You can just go to files and you can click on models. And then basically the brightness model is the one you have to download. You can move the illuminate by itself. So click on brightness, click download. And now that these are downloaded, now that these model files are downloaded, I'm going to be showing you the place where you're going to be keeping these model files. So I'll open up the actual directory where I'm keeping the code for automatic double 11. And this is going to be in this case, once I'm in there, I am basically going to try to increase the size of the UI. You're going to go to the point where it says a folder called extensions. So let me find extensions. Inside of extensions, again, let me make these extra large. You're going to go to SD Web UI Control Net. And then from here, you are basically going to go to um, a file called the models folder. And then inside of this model folders is where you're going to be placing both of these files. So I'm going to basically open up a new finder window or file explorer for windows. I'll go to downloads. I'll copy both of these two model files. So tile and brightness, and I'll copy them into this models folder. Once this is done, you can close down these folders. You can delete these model files from your download folder. Just make sure that they're within that models folder. Don't delete them from there. And now that this is done, we have to restart the complete instance of automatic 11, 11, not just the web UI. So to do that, I will come back to Windows PowerShell. I'll do command C or whatever way you would close down um, automatic 11 from running. And I'll restart it by using the command that you would use to start um, automatic 11 UI. In my case for Windows, it's 
dot forward slash web UI dash user dot bat file for Mac OS. I think it's something similar. And then for Google collab, whatever way you would do it and press enter and restart the UI. In any case, if you're looking for how to actually install automatic double 11, double 11 on your system, I do have tutorials for that on my YouTube channel. So I will leave links down to them in the video's description as well. And you can take a look at them if you want to actually learn how to get this type of system running on your system. So now that the UI is running and you can see that it gives me local uh, running on local URL this, um, I can restart or just reload the actual web page. And now we're ready to interact with ControlNet. So we're basically going to be using ControlNet. And for those of you who do not know what ControlNet is, ControlNet is just a neural network that allows us to control the output of stable diffusion in a bunch of different ways using a bunch of different parameters. That's basically it is. And today we're going to be using two different control nets in tandem with each other, coupled with stable diffusion and the prompt that we give to generate these QR codes. So to get started, the first thing that we'll do is that we'll go to our settings. We'll go to the control nets section for our settings and we'll change this multi control net value to be two. Mine's already two, but you have to change this to two. Once you're done with this, you're going to click on apply settings and then reload UI. And once this is done, we'll go to the text to image section. Now, once we're here, we'll first tackle the control net side of things and then we'll come to the actual prompt. So to handle the control net side of things, we'll go to the control net section. I'll expand the options and you're going to see that because of that setting that we changed we have two control net at our disposal that we can use to basically influence the output of stable diffusion so in the first control net which is unit zero i'll click on the image and i'll select the qr code that i want to make for those of you who are confused as to how they can actually generate a qr code image like this I will leave a link to the website that I use to generate this QR code, but basically the website is this, and let me just drag and copy it here. So it's called 34qr.com, and you can select the type of QR code you want. I will say that be cautious with how much data you put within the QR code. Uh, QR codes that have a lot of data within them and are really complicated usually do not work well with the generated version that comes out of Stable Diffusion. So very basic QR codes which might contain a URL or maybe some mail address or maybe a phone number as well as Wi-Fi details, they usually tend to work out pretty well. But for text generated QR codes, that's pretty difficult. But for the URL, all you'll do is you'll do HTTPS like Seth forward slash qr-art.xyz uh, whatever you want to do the size can be left to 350 350 make sure fault tolerance is set to high 30 percent click on generate and then take this qr code and download a png file for that and that's pretty much all you have to do so then you can upload that qr code file here then you can come down to the control net section you click on unable leave control type to all set the preprocessor to be input global harmonious the model to be tile and then we'll basically define the control weight. So the control weight basically refers to how much does this control net influence the output that stable diffusion gives us. So the higher it is, the more the influence, the more prominent the QR code will be in the generated image and the less changed it'll be. And the less it'll be, the more morphed the QR code might be and the more artistic the image might be or more control might be given to stable diffusion, let's just say. In my testing, I concluded that 0.45 was a very good value, which was a good mix between the way the QR code is presented and that it's scannable, but yet it's quite artistic as well. The starting control weight is when this control net starts to take effect. In my case, 0.2 was a good value. Ending is when this control step stops to take effect. In the control mode, you can leave the balanced and then resize mode is crop and resize. And that's pretty much all you have to do for the first layer of the control net. Now we can go to unit one click on the image section again, give it the same QR code image. This time click on enable, control type is all, preprocessor is same in pin global harmonious, but the model this time is going to be brightness. The control weight for this is going to be 0.6. And this brightness model basically allows us to control the parts of our image that we want to be painted over or let stable diffusion draw on. In this case, we want the white parts to be for our QR code. So that's why we're using this to basically draw over these white parts. We don't want these white parts to be in our image. We want these to be removed. And, and this is what the brightness model allows us to do and where we layman terms 
Uh, from there, starting control step can be 0 0.34. Feel free to play around with these and you can get drastically better results than me or drastically worse. Just depends on how much you kind of work with this. And then the ending step will be 0 0.7. Control mode will be balanced, resize is crop and resize, and that's pretty much all we have to do. So now that this is done, we can go and define the actual stable diffusion part of things that we want stable diffusion to basically do. So first is going to be the prompt. I want to generate this desert inspired kind of QR code as you can see. So what I'm going to do is that I will copy in my prompt. You can use any prompt here from wherever you want, uh, whatever you want it to be. I just decided to go with something like this. And then from here, we just need to change a couple of parameters for stable diffusion. Make sure that you can keep the sampling steps to whatever you want. 20 was a good enough value for me between speed and the type of results we get. Sampling method is Euler A. The width is going to be 768. The height is 768 as well. Reducing the width and height to be very little, it kind of generates an image that doesn't um, basically capture the details for the QR code so it doesn't become scannable. And if you use a very high resolution, then maybe the video memory that you require for your system might be a lot. But 768 was a resolution that a lot of systems might be able to handle and is a good compromise between the um, image being generated, the resolution for that, the speed that you can achieve this at, as well as the ability to scan the QR codes. With this done, that's pretty much all you have to do in terms of setup. So let's click on generate and let's see if this actually works for us. So as you can see, we were able to successfully generate the QR code and the QR code looks something like this. But I've kind of found out that with the base stable diffusion 1.5 model, the ability for me to generate very artistic QR codes was kind of being hindered. And the next steps is just totally optional if you want to create really artistic QR code. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be using a model that's kind of trained on top of Stable Diffusion 1.5 to be more artistic, and it's called Ghost Mix. And you can download it, and I'll leave the link to it as well. And we're going to be using this as opposed to the standard Stable Diffusion 1.5 model to generate even more artistic QR codes. So you can just basically use this link that I'll leave in the video description. And you can come to the section like here, and you can click on Download. And this is basically going to allow you to download the model. So now that my ghost mix model file is downloaded, what I'm going to do is that again, I'm going to go to this place where I have my automatic double one, double one um, code. And I am basically going to, when I'm within that folder, go to the models folder within this folder. So not within the extensions one, just the base uh, models folder where you would keep the checkpoint files for all of the other uh, models that you want um, automatic 1111 GUI to have access to. And I am going to go into models and then from there I am going to go to stable diffusion. And here is where I'm going to put in my ghost mix model file. So just copy that from downloads, put it in here like so. So as you can see, if I make the extra large icons, you can see that here, right next to my version 1.5 improved, I have the ghost mix model. So you can just close this down. I can delete it from here, don't need it in downloads. And then you can come back to automatic double one, double one. You can reload the model file from here just by clicking here. This is going to allow you to access the new one. Now you can see ghost mix is here. I'm gonna click on it and this is going to go ahead and start loading the model file for us. So it's going to take some time for these weights to be inputted into your computer's memory and to be loaded. Well, once they are loaded, we are now ready to generate this QR code again. And just by simply doing this and by using a more artistic model, you're going to see that the results we get are going to be drastically different. As you can see, this time the QR code that was generated is much more unique, as you can see, and this is the power of Ghost Mix. So I will use another prompt now to show you something different. This is a prompt for um, a QR code coupled with a gas station. I'll paste this in, click generate again. As you can see, the generation was done and this was the QR code that was generated from this prompt. So the last thing that I'm going to do now, and I'm also going to be showing you guys that if I actually use my phone to scan these QR codes, that they actually do scan and point towards the website that I was embedded into the QR code. So that's pretty much it for today's video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my channel if you want more cool, awesome, tutorials related to AI, machine learning, things like that. And as always, if you have questions regarding anything or if you want me to cover a topic on this channel, leave them down in the comments below as well. And I'll try my best to get back to you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.